Now, I'm hoping Leila Moran is with me. Leila, can you hear me? The Lib Dem MP for Oxford West Hello, and lovely Abingdon. Lovely to be with you. Ah, lovely to speak to you. You're also foreign affairs spokeswoman, I know, Leila. So let's ask you, first of all, about the situation in France. I mean, would you be happy travelling to France right now? Well, I've been speaking to some of my friends who live in Paris, um, and they report, actually, that the protests are, are relatively contained. They feel quite safe, so long as they stay away from them. France has a history of this kind of protest. Um, they're well used to it. I would go to France, but I would probably not join the protests or go anywhere near them. And they're relatively well advertised. I really hope it does calm down there. The situation is clearly very fraught and fragile. Um, and, you know, I am thinking of my friends who are being caught up sure. in it. It's, it's incredibly disruptive. And with France in mind, obviously, France often features in debates about immigration. I know you're opposed to the Rwanda plan. What's your alternative for stopping the boats, Leila? Mm. So, first of all, we have to have a look at who's actually coming across on these boats. Government's own statistics show that the vast majority, most recently, have been coming from places like Afghanistan. Now, people will remember that the very rapid withdrawal where we said that we would help anyone who helped the British while we were out there has actually fallen flat mm. on its face. And we've left many people there under huge strain, persecuted by the Taliban, uh, that are desperate for somewhere else to go. And okay. because they've got family here, some of them, they've ended up wanting to come here. So I think we've got to set up safe and legal routes, particularly for those places where there is a lot of disruption. But and haven't we got others, safe and legal routes, return. Leila? I mean, we've got safe they and legal don't. routes, but but surely even you no, have don't. to admit. They don't. They don't. They shut. But they you have shut. to admit. So yeah, but we have to admit that there has to be a limit in. even on asylum claims to this country. There has to be a limit, doesn't there? So on asylum claims, um, people are refugees and they have a right to, uh, across the world, and we've signed up to uh, international agreements that say this, that they can go to whichever country, it doesn't have to be the first, any country, and their claim assessed. Now, the thing the government needs to do is to sort the wheat from the chaff. We're talking about um, Rwanda. Let's just move it on a little bit, because... Obviously, the legal migration figure is very high at 600,000. That is represented by the fact that we have had safe and legal routes for people coming from the Ukraine and Hong Kong. I mean, what figure would you like to see legal migration at, Leila? Uh, look, I want to see... Uh, there's, there's sort of, you're conflating a number of different sort of things here. So, first of all, in terms of people fleeing Ukraine, I think I, I had a Ukrainian staying with me for well over a year and she's gone on and, and she's doing amazingly well. And I think, you know, the extraordinary generosity of the British people was there for all to see. And I think people can fully understand when they're fleeing wars, when they're fleeing persecution, that's obvious. Then there's a separate issue of whether or not there's illegality involved. And one of the things that we want to see is that the Home Office gets a grip. One of the reasons why the figure is so high is because they haven't been processing asylum claims. And there is no one, including myself, who would defend criminals being allowed to stay here and leeching off the state. Absolutely not. They should be going. But it's the government that's letting them do that because they are taking months and months and months. And while they're here, they're paying their bills and paying for their food because they can't sort their own admin out. So I think actually the answer to this is twofold. I mentioned safe and legal roads for those fleeing persecution, but the other is sorting the wheat from the chaff and conflating the two I don't think is helpful. Mm. Let's get the people who shouldn't be out quicker. Okay, I agree with you on that, Leila. Let's talk about housing. What's the Lib Dems housing target where you empower? How many houses would you like to build every year? So the main target that I think we need to talk about more is 150,000 social homes to be built a year. Now, that's really ambitious. That hasn't happened since, you know, at the very least the 70s. But the real issue is getting them built and not in the hands of the developers, but in the hands of local communities and local councils. Okay. So we're really proud in my area of the Vale and South uh, in Oxfordshire. We have one of the highest rates of house building in the country. And we've achieved that by having broad community support for what we're doing, lots and lots of consultation and trying to get to a point where we deliver the infrastructure. And this is the hard bit, delivering the infrastructure before the houses are built. Very often that's quite different to the way the government planning policy works. Yeah. And if there was one change I would make, it would be that. I think most people would accept more housing if they knew it would come with the roads, the schools, the GP then, services, 
promised. And then what ends up happening is okay. that developers never cough up the money. They say that they can't afford to do it. They reduce the amount of social homes they build and okay. people can't afford to live in those houses anyway. But Leila, when you were campaigning to win the by-election in Chesham and Amersham, I know because I live nearby, you kept on banging on about the Tories concreting over the countryside. So people are confused. Equally, in that by-election, you talked about being anti-HS2, even though nationally the party is for it. So which is it? Are you for house building or are you against it? Are you for HS2 or are you against it? Well, the part, so on HS2, the party continues to believe that whilst, you know, we need to make sure that we're delivering value for money for the taxpayers. And I sat on the public accounts committee when we looked at this, that we do need to keep on top of that. But broadly, we need to carry on. But yeah. the local MP, as the Tory MP did before, took a different stance. And that's that happens. You know, they are community champions. That is their role is to make sure okay. that their communities are heard. On house building, I've, I've set out the position. And I think the big yeah. issue here is the, is the approach. The Tories want to be developer led. They want to give them the power. We want to give communities that power. And by the way, the evidence shows that when we do that, more houses are built. Leila, thank you very, very much indeed for bearing with us this morning with our technical difficulties. Lovely to have you on the show.